written records of the history of Ireland did not appear until the Middle Ages. As a result, much of the early history of Ireland is shrouded in mystery. Megalithic tombs and other structures dot the landscape, but we have little certainty of who made them and why. Although medieval Irish historians did not know much about what happened before the arrival of Christianity, they did try to investigate the question. One of these attempts is the Book of the Taking of Ireland. The Book of the Taking of Ireland, also called the Book of Invasions, is a mytho-historical text written by an unknown author in the 11th century AD. It recounts a series of invasions in which multiple waves of people groups invade Ireland over several thousand years. The text seems to draw inspiration both from Celtic mythology and from the Bible. Several of the characters in the book are descendants of biblical figures such as Noah and Japheth. The flood is also mentioned. It may also have been influenced by Greek mythology since the book references Greece multiple times. The Book of Invasions was highly influential and was largely accepted as conventional history by poets and scholars down until the 19th century. Today scholars regard this particular book as primarily myth rather than history. It appears to be mostly based on medieval Christian pseudo-histories, but it also incorporates some of Ireland's native pagan mythology. Scholars believe that the goal of its writers was to provide a history for Ireland that could compare to that of Rome. It became one of the most popular and influential works of early Irish literature, and one scholar is quoted as saying it was written in order to bridge the gap between Christian world chronology and the prehistory of Ireland. Although the book we think is mostly legend, it is possible that it may contain granules of historical truth. The two major invasions mentioned in the book, the Tuatha Dé Danann and the Milesians, are mentioned in this particular book. According to this book, the earliest settlers of Ireland were led by a woman named Cesar. Cesar was a close relative of Noah, who along with 50 other women and three men settled Ireland just 40 days before a great flood. This colony did not last long. They all died by the time that flood took place. The second wave of people to settle Ireland came about 300 years later and was led by a man named Partholan. Partholan came with eight other travellers, four men and four women. Once they arrived, they got to work clearing plains, cutting down forests and driving away wild beasts to tame the land of Ireland and make it a civilised place. Partholan's descendants, their Partholians, flourished for over 300 years. However, they did end up getting into conflicts with the Formorians, a monstrous quasi-human race. The Fomorians are described by various sources as either having one arm, one leg and one eye or having the body of a man and the head of a goat. In some accounts though, they are also described as being strikingly beautiful. Then after about three centuries, their Partholians met a tragic end when they were wiped out by a plague. After the extinction of the Partholians, Ireland was once again uninhabited for 30 years until the arrival of Nemed. Nemeth and his family came from the area around Greece. At first, the Nemedians prospered in Ireland. They built forts and cleared plains, but after a while, the Formorians noticed they had new potential victims in Ireland and began to harass the Nemedians. Initially, the Nemedians did well in driving back the Formorian onslaught. They won several major battles, but eventually a plague struck their camp, wiping out about 2,000. After this, the Nemedians were significantly weakened because of their loss in number, and they soon fell under subjugation to the Fomorians. They were able to muster up an invasion force, however, to the island homeland of the Fomorians and were able to besiege the Fomorians in their tower. This battle, however, decimated the Nemedian population. By the end of the battle, it was said only about 30 Nemedians were left. Many of them fled to Greece, while a few of them left for Britain and Northern Europe. Those in Northern Europe are said to have eventually become the Tuatha Dé Danann, and those in Britain became the Britons. This was the end of the original Nemedians. The Nemedians who fled to Greece ended up becoming enslaved by the locals. After about 230 years of this, they were finally able to revolt and escape back to Ireland. When they arrived in Ireland, it was once again uninhabited. 
The Fear Bogs are said to have divided up the island into five different regions, each ruled by a chieftain. Another group of Nemedians settled in northern Europe and became the Thuata de Danan. These returned to Ireland later. According to legend, they excelled in science, magic and civilization. They are also believed to be the basis for later Christian legends of fairies. The Milesians are the final invaders identified as direct ancestors of the Gaels and the modern day Irish. After a series of battles, the Milesians drove the Tuatha de Danann underground. It is in this way that earlier invaders are connected to Irish legends of the little people living beneath hills and stones. It is far from clear how much actual history is in this book. It is likely that most of it is a mixture of Celtic mythology and legends from later Christian times. On the other hand, there may be some grains of truth. The story of the interaction between the Milesians and the Tuatha Dé Danann may reflect real aspects of the contact between the first Iron Age Celts to come to Ireland and the pre-Celtic Neolithic and Bronze Age inhabitants of Ireland, most likely responsible for the megalithic monuments that are scattered across the island. Nonetheless, the book is probably most useful in showing how Christian and pre-Christian Celtic thought were woven together to make a single narrative for the origin of the Irish that was both Celtic and Christian.